again and welcome to airgunweb.com. My name is Rick Utzler and I'm glad you can join us again today. Our review item today is one that has really been burning up the inbox over at YouTube and over at airgunweb.com. The rifle I'm talking about is the Stoger X50. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it and let's get a good look at this rifle. The first thing you should notice about the Stoger is just how long it is. It also has a good bit of weight. It's a very heavy rifle as, uh, as far as air guns go. Um, and the stock is all composite. It's wrapped in that uh, camo, which does make it look pretty cool. As you see, we've got a front muzzle brake and it's equipped with both front and rear fiber optic uh, true glow sights. Uh, I did not try the gun with the fiber optics because it shipped with a, uh, a 3 by 9 by 40 scope. And since most everybody is going to be shooting this with a scope, we figured we'd just skip the, uh, skip the open sights. The stock is pretty nice. Uh, they did a good job with the composites for sure. Um, it's not hollow, it's solid, which is a nice thing. You don't want that hollow sound when you, when you pull the trigger especially with a gun that is this powerful. Um, I've had some, some brake barrels that uh, really sort of rang in your ear. As you can see here, some of that uh, camo is flaking off. Uh, that's a problem. They're going to want to address that. I'm sure that's not going to make some people very happy. Here's another look at that front sight. We work our way back the barrel here. Uh, the bluing is pretty good. The machining looks pretty decent. It's pretty on par for what I've seen for uh, for guns coming out of China, at least some of the better ones. There's that rear sight. It's micro-click adjustable. If you're an open sights person, you'll like those. Working our way back. There's the automatic uh, safety on the gun. Every time you cock it, it kicks out. You push it back in. It's pretty typical. The rifle ships with a 3x9x40 AO adjustable scope um, and also that one piece mount. Um, you want to keep your eye on that scope. It will tend to loosen up on you and so you want to just make sure that you're, you're paying close attention to keep everything tightened up good. Um, everything on the scope worked pretty well and the optics were fairly clear. I wish they had mil dots uh, for range estimation however. Here's the trigger. Um, it's, you know, a variation on your standard trigger that you get in the Chinese guns where it has, uh, this model has the safety in the rear, but it's pretty typical. Light first stage and then a really, really horrible second stage. One of the most frustrating things I have discovered with regards to air guns and air gun manufacturers is their overselling of a product. When you sell a product and you say that it's supposed to reach 1500 feet per second, it needs to reach 1500 feet per second. This rifle does not do that. Um, I tested the uh, lightweight H&N Field Target Trophy Greens. They're a lead-free pellet and they're very, very light. Um, the best I was able to do uh, on average was about 1,293 feet per second. Frankly, that is, uh, that is really, really screaming, but it falls way short from the 1,500 feet per second. When you start moving into, say, the hobby pellets, which is our standard as far as velocity goes, um, it's a lead pellet, seven, seven grains. Um, we had a low of 1,117 feet per second, a high of a 1,142 feet per second, with an average of 1,128 feet per second, giving us a lar the, the large spread of 2553 um, and a standard deviation of 6.92 feet per second. As far as the most accurate pellets, we came across two that worked reasonably well. Um, one was the H&N uh, Barracuda, and they're the copper-plated ones. Those pellets uh, actually hit very, very hard, uh, generating 18.68 foot-pounds. Um, there was a low velocity for those pellets um, of 895 feet per second, 
a high of 924, an average of 908, with the um, extreme spread of 28 feet per second, almost, 24, uh, almost 29 feet per second, and a standard deviation of 8.83 feet per second. Um, those shot extremely well, as we're going to see on the, uh, on the accuracy tests. Those did, those did pretty well. The best pellet turned out to be the JSB uh, Diablo um, Exact Heavies. The JSB Diablo Exact Heavies uh, weigh about 10.2 grains, and they generate 19.54 foot-pounds. That's a lot of energy out of a 177 pellet. We had a low velocity of 919 feet per second, a high velocity of 939 feet per second, with an average of 928 feet per second. The extreme spread on this pellet was 19.48 feet per second, with a standard deviation of only 6.55 feet per second. Now that we've looked at the velocities, let's go ahead and see how this Stoger X50 performs at the bench. So what's my final take on the Stoger X50 brake barrel rifle? Well, you're dealing with a $320 rifle. It comes with a scope, uh, but it is made in China. Now consider that the RWS 350 Magnum uh, in a striker combo is currently on sale at Pyramid Air for $385. Um, I don't see the logic in going with a Chinese gun when you can spend a little bit more and get something uh, in an RWS that's German made and that has a track record of being very, very reliable and sturdy over a long period of time. This gun was very tough to get to wear in, and it went very quickly from wearing in to now it feels like it's wearing out. Even though I was able to get some decent shot groups, the barrel does not want to lock in place like it used to, uh, and it just feels sloppy. The shooting characteristics of this gun make it so that the spring seems like it just takes forever to finish the shot. It takes an exceptional amount of technique and a lot of practice to get good groups out of this rifle. The trigger pull on the Stoger is also a, an issue that's going to take a lot of patience. The second stage of the trigger takes forever to get through, and it's actually rather stiff. The other thing that I found with an issue, and this is uh, just my ergonomics that I had a problem with, the curve of this stock is a little too long. The placement here made it so I had to really scooch my hand high up on the stock and it just wasn't comfortable to shoot. I want to thank the folks over at Pyramid Air for providing this rifle and all the supplies for this review. When you need your next air gun or your next batch of supplies, please remember to go to www.pyramidair.com. They've been a great help to me in this YouTube channel, and they're a tremendous supporter of the industry. So please remember, www.pyramidair.com for your next batch of supplies or your next air gun order. Thank you again. My name is Rick Utzler with airgunweb.com. Please shoot safe and have a whole lot of fun.